Hey artist, I am so excited for this week's lesson on jars and insects. All right, so we're gonna go on an imaginary adventure and you have a jar and we're outside, we're walking around and you see a really cool insect that you just want to bring home inside, show your parents, show your friends before releasing him back into the wild. Well, if you captured a slimy slug or a furry worm, what else would you need to put in there so they are happy and that they survive? Do they need rocks and dirt? Maybe leaves to eat? Maybe it's a spider and they made a little spider web inside your jar. So we're gonna think about what habitat and what would make that animal happy before he goes back to his home. So the first thing that we need to decide is what type of jar do we wanna create? We could have one that has a lock. We could have a jar like a mason jar that just screws off. Or we could have a jar with a cork, like a little cork stopper. So with that in mind, I'm going to be teaching you how to draw all three jars. The first jar we're gonna do is a jar with a cork. So we're gonna start with a slight curved horizontal line and then we're gonna bring down a, a little bit of a diagonal from each edge, and then we're gonna kind of curve outwards to get the body of the jar. We're gonna close the bottom of the jar with, again, a little bit of a curved line, and then we're gonna show the back of the jar to give the illusion that it has a bottom. So it's more of a rainbow arch and then some curved lines to, to represent the glass. Next is the cork, so we're gonna do two diagonal lines along the sides, a straight line along the top and the bottom. I'm gonna just curve it to give it a little bit more depth, and now I'm adding just a couple little dots to show that it's made of cork. The other type of jar is a mason jar, something with a screw top lid. So we're gonna first start with a curved line and then I'm giving the ridges along the edge of the jar. I'm gonna give, suggest a couple lines so they have different sections. Curve the top to give some depth. And now two diagonal lines towards each other. And then we're gonna give the outward walls of the jar. So just slightly curved vertical lines. Along the bottom, again, we're just gonna kind of close it with a slight curved line. Another rainbow type arch to give that depth and give the bottom. And then just a couple reflection lines for the bottom. The last option is adding a locking clasp to your jar. So this can just be done on the mason jar design. And then you're just gonna follow these little step-by-steps to add a little bit of a lock. When you're choosing which jar design that you wanna go with, remember that you can always make a couple different changes. You can make your jar taller or wider. It could be a short and wide jar, tall and skinny. Um, be aware that you can just go look back at some different examples, look at jars that you have in your home. No right or wrong way to do this. So now the fun part begins. You're gonna imagine what animal that you have captured into your jar. You're going to think about what else could be in that jar. It's not just going to be an animal. They need food. They need um, an environment to really thrive. So I decided to go with a spider. And so I've added a spider web in the corner and my spider is going to be really big. And he's got three eyes and a little smile because he's happy, a big old body and then I'm gonna start adding the legs. Now I totally suggest that you guys do your drawing in pencil first and then outline in Sharpie, but um, that way you can make some changes as you move forward. So I finished my spider, I'm gonna add some little flies and bugs flying around because that's what spiders eat. And I'm even adding some movement lines to make it look like they are kind of flying around. 
I'm adding one inside the spider web that accidentally got trapped. Oh no! And now I've noticed that my jar is a little empty, so I'm going to add some grass just throughout the corners. We're gonna show overlapping by having some in front, some behind, and then I'll be adding some grass in the opposite corner as well. So once you've finished your drawing, I highly suggest that you outline in Sharpie just so it kind of pops out a little bit more. And if you have watercolors, that's what I'm using to add color to my jar, but crayons or markers will work totally fine. So I'm using some just regular copy paper, so the paint is absorbing really fast into the paper. So I'm having to do a bunch of different layers and it's not as vibrant as I was hoping but I'm starting with just the lid of the jar and then I have some gold paint, so I'm adding a gold clasp. And just as we start to actually paint all of our different elements, I'm thinking about texture, adding some like fur on my spider and really taking my time. I wanna make sure that I'm coloring and painting each individual shape at a time and I wanna make sure I try and stay inside those lines. As I move on to the blades of grass, I'm using multiple types and shades of green. That way it just gives a little bit more depth, a little bit more interest than just everything being one color. So after you've finished painting everything, we're gonna add some shadows and highlights. So just using a little bit of a darker color, we're going to add shadows on along one side, and then I'm pairing a light blue to give the glass reflection, and I'm pairing that on the side of the shadow, but then also on the opposite side of the jar. Your reflection in your shadow, if you had a really large animal, that's gonna go directly on top. You would actually paint on top of anything that's in the jar. As you can see on the blade of grass, my reflection is directly on top of that blade of grass. That way it actually makes it look like it's a jar. Now I'm going in and I'm just adding a little bit of a shadow along the left-hand side with a light gray. I'm not painting the entire jar. This is just gonna help make the jar look like it is curving back and I'm just using little tiny lines to give shadows and reflections. If you are using watercolor, you wanna make sure that your shadows and reflections are mixed with a lot of water. We don't want these to be really bright and vibrant. We just want them to kind of fade into the white of the paper. Right, artist, I hope you had so much fun with this project and I cannot wait to see what you created. See you next time.